Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sly Cooper Wiki. I'm your host Trev, a bureaucrat on the wiki, and today we're going to look at another collection. Now we're not looking at a North American Sly collection, don't worry, I think we're past that at this point. We're actually looking at the PAL release, the Sly Trilogy. Now, first off, release dates, the North American version was released on November 9th, 2010. The PAL Sly Trilogy was released almost a month later on December 3rd, 2010. I'm not quite sure why there's that difference in release dates, but it's there nonetheless. And right off the bat, we're seeing a few differences here. For starters, the North American variant features the cover art of all three games' initial releases featured on a billboard, possibly in Paris. Whereas the Sly Trilogy artwork features artwork that's very similar to the PAL, ver PAL artwork for Sly 2 Band of Thieves, which we have right here. So that artwork is pretty similar, it even includes uh, that image from Sly Raccoon of Sly leaping from a rooftop, interestingly enough. It omits the moon, but other than that really it does seem to take that Sly 2 artwork directly there. Uh, in terms of marketing, the PlayStation Move is advertised a little bit. Instead of the PlayStation Move banner being on the top, it's moved to the side with a statement includes extra mini games for your motion controller. And it does feature a banner here, PlayStation Move features. And this also includes the Classics HD branding, which is pretty common among PAL releases of remastered trilogies or collections. You might have seen those in Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank, for instance. Additionally, it also carries the 3D compatible branding that we've come to expect from 3D games that are compatible with 3D TVs. I personally have not used that feature, but uh, it's there if you want it. Moving to the spine, we see things that are a little more interesting than PAL covers that we've seen before. Um, instead of a bland white background, this background attempts to blend in with the rest of my Sly Cooper games with some sort of design there. Um, it still has Sly Trilogy in plain font, so I guess, you know, old habits do die hard. But the branding, uh, the, the identifier on the bottom is BCES00982 in this case, which obviously, as you might have guessed, does differ from its North American counterpart. Moving to the back, we see a lot more differences here. Um, Obviously different marketing all across the board with the world sneakiest thief is back and this is where sort of the misbranding starts to occur because as you might read that first sentence you'll be a little bit puzzled as to what's going on. Do you have the guile to help Sly Raccoon and his trusty sidekicks pull off a host of- hold up hold up. Sly Raccoon. Yeah. That's uh... That's strange. Yeah. You're probably thinking the same thing I am. Sly Raccoon? Now, there's obviously been a bit of a debate as to whether it's Sly Raccoon or Sly Cooper. Why was Sly Raccoon called Sly Raccoon in Europe or outside of the United States, whereas he was called Sly Cooper in the United States? I'm honestly not quite sure, but this is a, a little bit irritating because by the time Sly 2 and Sly 3 came around, they had established that he was Sly Cooper not Sly Raccoon. His surname was most certainly Sly Cooper. And even in Sly Raccoon, the actual game, the actual gameplay does reference him as Sly Cooper, not Sly Raccoon. So the fact that the Sly Trilogy markets him as Sly Raccoon is at the very least a bit puzzling, maybe due to a bit of a miscommunication, but I don't know. It, it's there. It You might get annoyed by it, you might not. I, I don't know. It's up to you as to how you feel about that. Anyways, moving on, the screenshots we see here are even more bizarre, honestly. The biplane one is fine. Obviously, there were biplanes in Sly 3, so that's completely cool. Uh, we do have a screenshot of Murray, Sly, Bentley, and Penelope. This is during the first uh, job of Episode 4, when they're trying to wake up Panda King. But the screenshot on the right is very bizarre because it features Sly versus Jean Bisson. Now, a bit of a side story into memory lane. That boss battle did not feature Sly, it actually featured Bentley in a very critical role in Bentley's life. This is most certainly not Sly vs. Jean Bisson. Now quite frankly, I don't really care, it is actually kind of cool to see a Sly vs. Jean Bisson screenshot because quite honestly I would never have thought of that, um, but it's interesting to see it being used in the Sly trilogy marketing. Uh, I don't know why, 
but it's there nonetheless. Um, the captions that go each of, with each of them don't really associate themselves very well with the uh, screenshots, but they're there, completely remastered in high definition for super sharp visuals. Three cunning classics on one Blu-ray disc, Sly Raccoon, Sly 2, Sly 3, and featuring bonus PlayStation Move minigames and fully playable in 3D. Uh, and there is a notice here at the bottom that says this game is playable in 2D or 3D, so if you don't have a 3D TV, no need to worry, you can play this game completely fine. Additionally, we also have a Region 2 code, which indicates that this game was meant to go with Region 2 PlayStation 3s, though as I've mentioned in previous videos, the PlayStation 3 isn't region locked, so you can play this game on your normal uh, PlayStation 3 that's outside of Europe, if you so desire. I've got a few things to say about the inside, but I'll go through them one at a time as, as best as I can. The discs, as you've seen, are probably going to differ. The Sly Trilogy disc does feature that art of Sly leaping in the first game along uh, with the city sort of as a backdrop. Uh, the Sly Collection disc features Sly running as he did on the back of the North American Sly 2 case, uh, again with a city as a backdrop. Um, other than that really, I mean they have, interestingly enough, this disc here has Sucker Punch mentioned on it, but not Sanzaru. The disc on the North American side has none of that mentioned at all. Not quite sure why, but that's basically how the disc is branded. Both copies do include a manual. The Sly Trilogy includes a manual featuring images from Sly 3. So this is Bentley from Sly 3, Sly from Sly 3, and Murray from Sly 3. And the manual continues its endeavor to rebrand Sly as Sly Raccoon with the first, I guess technically, yeah, first page of the manual saying Sly Raccoon, the legendary master thief, the ring-tailed rascal whose daring raids and heists once set alarm bells ringing across the world. Uh, da, 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 da. They can't see him, they can't hear him, but they know he's ready to strike. He's the top thief in town, he's a mammal on a mission, his name is Sly Raccoon, and this is his incredible story. Great job whoever made this manual, I gotta say. Other than that, I mean, it has the controls for each game. Uh, I mean, not really too interesting. It's about as the same as the Sly Collection manual. There are controls for the mini games, but I mean, really, it's a manual. It's good reading material when you really don't have anything else to do. Now I do want to point out the inside jacket because again, I'm not quite sure how they built um, the jacket for this game, but it leaves a few questions. Now it does follow that comic style strip, comic strip style, excuse me, that we saw in the PAL version of Sly 3, but the images featured here are a bit odd to say the least. Now. Bentley's pickpocket pull, it's fine. Sly and Carmelita leaping, it's fine. Um, the two-player mode, which wasn't really advertised on the PAL version of Sly 3 back in the PlayStation 2, it's there, it's fine. Uh, the biplane screenshot is a bit interesting. First and foremost, it features a turret meter. That actually isn't there in the final version of the game. That turret meter is actually built in to the thief meter as a sort of power-up meter sort of thing. So that's interesting to see, and if I recall correctly, the final number of biplanes that you have to shoot down in uh, the final game is actually reduced to 25 rather than 30, which indicates that this is maybe a beta screenshot or a demo screenshot. Now it puzzles me why this screenshot would be used to market a game that released in 2010 that is a remaster of a game that released in 2005, but I digress. Well, not quite actually, because that last screenshot right there, that's not Octavio's final design. That's a design from a beta or a demo. That wasn't his final design by any means, but it's it's included in the jacket of the Sly Trilogy. So there's that for you. And with all that said and done, that brings us to the end of this unboxing of the Sly Trilogy. Obviously there are a few incomplete things presented in the manual and the sleeve, but the game itself is obviously the full three games from the Sly Cooper series. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new here and want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. I will have high quality scans of the, the sleeve, the manual, and the disc in the description down below so you can view those beta screenshots as well as all of the manual in its full glory at your own discretion. 
And as always, if you guys want us to unbox something sooner rather than later, definitely let us know in a comment down below. Until then, this has been your host, Trev of the Sly Cooper Wiki, your number one resource for anything and everything Sly Cooper. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.